So, um, good afternoon from your chair and good morning from uh, all our speakers who are joining from uh, Germany. Welcome to your chair's uh, second real estate September series. On uh, today's session, we are focusing on uh, building qualities and building greens, which uh, specifically on the green building certification uh, as a driver for the sustainable transition for the real estate sectors. Um, thank you for everyone to, who joined uh, our second webinar today. Um, without any further delay, um, I would like to also mention that uh, today's webinar is co-partner with Build for People Projects, and also uh, some of the speakers has also joined uh, 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 representing from the project itself. On the agenda, we will start with a short introduction uh, from uh, Mr. Michel Passani. He's the uh, Euro Cham, uh, Chairman on Real Estate, and, um, Real Estate Instruction Committee. And afterward, we will have a range of presentation from our expert uh, speakers from Germany. And afterward, uh, Dr. Susan Bodach will, uh, will also uh, moderate the panel discussion afterward. I would like to quickly mention uh, to our participants uh, to, to, to drop your questions in our training function below. And also uh, today webinar session will also uh, uh, be available uh, for Khmer languages. So for those of you who would like to listen in Khmer, you, you can do so by selecting on the globe icon below. And please uh, make sure to mute your original audio to avoid the uh, echo sound. So, Without any delay, uh, I would like to welcome uh, Mr. Michel Fasayen for a short uh, remark from uh, the Real Estate Committee. Thank you, Michel. Thank you and uh, good afternoon, anyone, and welcome to this second series of our Real Estate uh, Summer Series uh, webinar. The first one was on RICS and has a, had collected a good audience, and so hopefully we'll get even more for this, for this series. Uh, and don't forget the third one, which will be host uh, next Monday uh, in the uh, other seminar. So today is about uh, green building and the certification process. We are very glad to to uh, to have this webinar today because for the for the past seven eight years, Eurocham Real Estate and Construction Committee has had advocated. Uh, towards the Ministry of Construction and towards the Ministry of Environment for the creation of the Green Building Council. And today is a reality. So we are now taking a more step forward uh, with this council and uh, discuss about uh, building certification and, uh, and awareness, I think, on, the, on this subject. Um, so I will leave the floor to Suzanne. Thank you very much for organizing this webinar. The floor is yours. Back to Ketratana, Cathy. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Joe. So next, um, may I invite uh, Dr. Michael Weibel, uh, the project leader of Bill for 
beautiful people to give us a short uh, introductions. Thank you. Hello, uh, good afternoon everybody in Cambodia, good morning everybody in Europe. Uh, my name is Michael Weibel. I'm senior researcher at Hamburg University in Germany and uh, have been do I have been doing research in Southeast and East Asia since about 25 years. Since 2019, I'm guiding the Build for People project, trying to promote uh, sustainable buildings and sustainable urbanization in Cambodia. And currently, I'm also involved in another project focusing on sustainable building materials in Vietnam. Next slide, please. So our Build for People team uh, is quite big. We consist uh, from the German side of four universities and two companies. Um, three universities and one company is present today as a speaker. Uh, in Cambodia, we uh, cooperate with uh, four universities and uh, we do implementation and foster implementation with Phnom Penh Capital Administration and in cooperation with the National Council for Sustainable Development. Uh, in terms of dissemination, we target different uh, target groups. And one important target group is the corporate, corporate sector. And that's why we work together and do this dissemination event today with the European Chamber of Commerce of Cambodia. Thanks so much that you have facilitated this today. Thank you. Next slide. Uh, looking at our approach, uh, uh, you can have a look at the logo on the left side. It can be compared to a dartboard. In the center of the dartboard uh, are the people. That's why we have a work package of environmental psychologists uh, dealing with aspects of behavior change, trying to influence people to uh, uh, have a more environmental uh, friendly behavior and trying to increase public participation in political decision making. Further, we have a work package on sustainable building led by Dirk Schwede, who will present after me. We have a work package uh, sustainable neighborhoods uh, led by Rolf Messerschmidt, uh, who will present today as well. And more on an urban level, we have a work package on urban green infrastructures, on urban climate. Urban climate, for example, is dealing with the topic of urban heat islands. And finally, we have a work package dealing with questions of sustainable urban transformation from a governance perspective led by Hamburg University. And last but not least, we have a coordination work package led by Hamburg University and by my person as well uh, in the context of Build for People. So all in all, let me summarize, we follow a people-led, cross-cutting and transdisciplinary approach. Next slide, please. This is summarized by our main objective, mainly to support the reconfiguration of Phnom Penh's urban development regime towards more sustainability and a better urban quality of life. We want to do this uh, together uh, and um, try to uh, leave the path of business, business as usual behind and combine knowledge from all different disciplines and um, choose different participatory formats to um, Reconfigure, reconfigure this development path. Next slide, please. Obviously, this is very necessary. If you look at the timeline picture on the left, Phnom Penh has uh, seen a very intensive dynamic urban development, urban spatial growth in the past with many unsustainable consequences, for example, in terms of urban flooding and European Chamber of Commerce of Cambodia estimated that urban population in Cambodia will double in the next decade. And uh, Global Green Growth Institute projected that half of the buildings of Phnom Penh, which will be in 2050, have not even been erected yet. So we regard uh, our project and our approach as unique uh, window of opportunity to tackle the field of sustainable buildings and sustainable urbanization in Cambodia. Next slide, please. We do this by uh, following an uh, intricate three-phase research design where we have an analytical phase in the beginning. Then we have this transdisciplinary action research phase where we, for example, in, uh, react and uh, deal with Phnom Penh Capital Administration and organize some urban living labs. 
And finally, we have a phase of reintegration of creative knowledge and refinement of theory. And all in all, we use uh, this uh, by applying participatory methods, cross-cutting interventions from transition governance approaches. In general, we also try to promote integrated urban development and to promote a planning culture, which is not top-down, not only based on designing of plans or master plans, but more understood as a dialogue and a process and this shall support Phnom Penh to pursue a more sustainable and livable urban development pathway. Next slide, please. Last but not least, I would to, uh, introduce briefly an example of our activities. Among others, we will facilitate a so-called uh, sustainable building business incubator in cooperation with Impact Hub Phnom Penh. Uh, within that impact hub, we try to support young entrepreneurs, green architects, for example, to develop business models and to raise funds uh, to um, pursue their business, uh, pitch their ideas to investors and to uh, facilitate in this way experimental implementation to realize sustainability oriented solution in the building sector. So this is a very brief overview of the Build for People project. Uh, we will uh, have more inputs from my colleagues Dirk Schwede and Wolf Messerschmidt. Next slide, please. Thanks a lot for your attention. I'm very glad to present uh, this uh, event and my presentation today with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Michael, for, for your introductions to the project. So next on our agenda, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Stefan Anders, who will be uh, speaking on the German Sustainable Building Certification applied in the Asian region. So uh, Dr. Anders, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. So thank you very much. Welcome everybody, also from my side. Um, so I will give you an introduction also about our approach for sustainable building and certification of these buildings and whole districts. Um, the slides you next please or i can show my slides now okay so um yeah this is for example one um school they get a special award we call it the climate positive award in singapore and if you um, see also the school there of design and the environment you see there's also a lot of shadows so they uh, look also very kind um, which climate situations there are, what they can improve, is there a possibility also for natural wet ventilation and I will show you also um, some other aspects of this project later. Next one. Um, next, we have to click sometimes. Um, so we are a non-profit organization, we are real, uh, Europe's biggest network for sustainable building uh, with 1,300 member organizations all over the world. Uh, for us, very important to bring sustainability in practice is our rating scheme, uh, which we have developed with experts, with universities together uh, for individual buildings, but also for whole districts and interiors. And with that, we have certified more than 7,000 projects. Uh, very important to bring this knowledge, what is inside the system also in practice is our academy, uh, where we train uh, everybody who is interested in the topic, also in general about sustainable construction. Uh, we offer there also different online courses. Um, yeah, have a look at that. Thank you. Next year. Yeah, but we started in Germany, uh, but we are working also more and more in a global context. So more than 10% of our projects are outside um, of Germany. Uh, we have certified developments in almost 30 countries. Um, and in the German speaking countries, we have a 60% market um, share. So you see here also in the Asia region, China, Thailand, Indonesia, uh, we have also their experience there to um, certify projects. Next. Yeah, the special approach of the DGMB system, also to compare to others, maybe you know, is in our approach, we always adapt our system to local conditions, means climate zones, but also local laws. 
weighting factor, if, for example, water is more important and benchmarks. And at the end, you have really a system who fit really good to your local context. Next. This is one example. We have also made done an adaptation to Spain in Europe. Um, there, for example, the topic of water, water risk is also even higher than in Germany. So we adapt here the weight risk factor. Um, this is also only one example. And we do that also for each criteria that it fits really good on your context. Next. Yeah, because what we believe is that uh, very important to look at the location, at the, um, at the climate of the uh, vacation, but also local materials, and to inspire from already existing buildings. I mean, not that you will build a um, house like that in Indonesia today again, but you can um, think what is good and on the project about the natural ventilation, for example, to use local materials, and then translate that to the a new design um, and uh, a new approach and uh, build it now. Next. It is this one example again here in, in Singapore, um, this um, academy, so they build it here also with um, cement and other materials, but they use all a lot of wood. And what is interesting there is they try but to have their also uh, only natural ventilation, no mechanical ventilation, and to bring not so much uh, heat inside the building that you do not have to cool it, and a lot of other interesting approaches. It's um, uh, designed by a series of multiple architects together with a German uh, engineer film, Transala. Next. And you see how it could look like. Yeah? So they think a lot about natural ventilation through the building. They have a big overhanging roof with photovoltaics there to produce energy on site on the building. They have a closed east and west facade uh, because of sun uh, and that the building is not overheating. They try to have it also natural ventilation and in some days in the year there's also possibility about a hybrid cooling system if required. Um, yeah, so really interesting project. You will find there are also a lot of um, interesting uh, articles about that in the internet if you're interested in that. Next. Yeah, and as I said, we um, have certified also other projects in the Asia region, in Thailand, uh, together with our local partner, EGS Plan. Uh, they have um, the JV Auditor um, there. Uh, but also in China, you see here our residential buildings, whole, whole districts. You will hear later a little bit about the um, um, Jingdao Eco Park and the Enterprise Center. Next. Yeah, at the end, the certificate could be really a proof of quality. Yeah. Uh, so if you are discussing, you will to build a green building, everybody understands something different, um, what is green really. And um, this certification scheme offers you more or less a holistic view on the topic. You don't forget their um, criteria. And at the end, um, the investor or the owner of the building uh, could really say, OK, he have a um, really, really good uh, building with a gold standard. So it was a healthy materials, low energy demand, and other important topic. Next. What we have done also in other regions, for example, here in China, that we are working together with the local certification scheme. So here the three-star system in China and offer their possibility to have their double certificate. Well, that's also something maybe we can discuss um, in, in Cambodia. Next. And this is only one idea, a vision. Uh, we are working also together uh, in Cambodia to develop their a Cambodian certification system, really at the starting point, very slim, with only some important criteria. And um, there maybe there's also an overlap to the DGMB system, so some issues are more or less the same, maybe not so complex and detailed how we do that at the moment. Um, but um, there is an overlap and you could say if you use the Cambodian certification system, that's a good starting point to work on the topic. And maybe some investors are also interested to have their international approach and they can do more and can even have also the international DGMB system standard. So that could be maybe one idea we can discuss also maybe later. Thank you. Next. 
yeah, we offer there also a lot of publication on our website in English. So feel free to look to that to life cycle assessment, circular economy, and other aspects. Next. And then I'm um, finished with the presentation. Thank you very much for listening. And um, I'm curious to hear maybe your questions or later in the discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Stefan. So next, um, I would like to invite uh, Dr. De Esreda. Uh, also, he's the leader uh, of a Real for Project, uh, Real for People project for the, his presentation on the regional progress of certified green buildings and quality aspects. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome, everyone. My name is Dirk Schweder. I'm a um, researcher at the University of Stuttgart and represent in the Build for People project the sustainable building aspect. So this is the red circle in the logo. But on the other hand, I'm also, and I have been working in the past as a consultant for uh, energy efficient and also sustainable building uh, in um, China. And we have also with our office uh, uh, activity in uh, in Thailand. And uh, I want to present some of the uh, activities we have done in regard to uh, building certification. Please, next slide. Yes, when I started to work in China at the time, it was, I arrived in uh, 2008, it was just the time when LEED was very um, uh, well known and, and, and uh, uh, very high on the agenda by many people. The DGNB was just founded in Germany. Uh, and we came across a couple of, um, of clients. Uh, these were uh, architect and a civil engineer, uh, um, uh, yeah, uh, a couple, and they uh, decided that they want to build a, a building together. They want to invest by themselves and they want to design. Both of them have studied at my university in Stuttgart, so they knew about the German situation and they said, we don't want to build a German building in China, but we want to build a Chinese building with German qualities uh, following uh, a German approach. And that was then uh, they approached us because they knew that we were a, a German consulting firm just starting in China. And they we worked together on this first DGNB project. This project was never built, but it was very interesting for us to work on this project because we had good clients who wanted to have a high quality building, but who also understood, of course, the situation in China. And uh, we uh, wanted to develop the quality. And then, next slide, please. We started to work with the DGNB system at the time and uh, looked at all the qualities of the design. And when you start with the DGNB system and uh, with also other certification schemes, you don't look at single aspects, but it's very important that you have a holistic view, that you look at qualities which you might not be uh, considering uh, otherwise. So by applying a certification scheme. In this case, here's a DGNB scheme. You, of course, look at energy efficiency and you look at perhaps thermal comfort. You look at other comfort dimensions, but also how the building can be used by all people, by handicapped people and so on. You look at uh, technical qualities like fire protection and so on. And that was very interesting because we found things which are well regulated in China but in this scheme, there are also qualities which are not regarded uh, and, and considered in Chinese uh, normal construction processes, but which are very important to develop the quality. Next slide, please. When we look at DGNB system for buildings, and I think the, the same is true for neighborhoods, we follow three basic principles. One is that we have a life cycle orientation. So we look at not only um, the building at one time, but also what happens with the building afterwards and what happened before with the materials we have, uh, uh, we, we use for the building 
construction. And we not look only at the construction cost and the difficulties in the design, but we also look how will the building perform in future. And then we have this comprehensive approach, which I just uh, introduced before. Uh, we not look at one specific uh, quality at a time, but we try to balance the qualities so that uh, we have a holistic and a well-developed design at the end. And then important is also performance, uh, uh, that we base our design on performance, that we test the design, that we uh, think how will the building perform in future. Uh, so we don't look at single technical key uh, technologies, but that we uh, try to understand uh, what will be the holistic performance of the building in future. Next slide. Yeah, this was another project which was very interesting here. Uh, there was a client, um, uh, Lancy. Lancy is a very famous developer in China who had made a name for themselves for energy efficient building, for passive houses and so on. Uh, and uh, they wanted to build a uh, uh, test projects for themselves. So this is a, a boarding house where, where uh, their own employees can live. Uh, they have a little campus where research is done. And this is a boarding house. And they try to test uh, many different kinds of certification schemes. So this building is certified with a passive house certification. It's uh, edge certification. So if you look at the leaflets for edge, for the edge system, you will find also this this project. And it's also uh, certified with the DGNB scheme and platinum at that time. This was uh, one of the first really built DGNB projects. And the motivation of the developer was to learn on a small project what is, are the implement, uh, implications of uh, applying uh, a certification scheme, and then also to learn what of these qualities can be used for future um, let's say, real-world, real-scale projects uh, they develop. Next slide, please. This is a big project in the context of uh, the Qingdao Eco Park. Uh, this was a large-scale mixed-use uh, project uh, in Qingdao Eco Park. Qingdao Eco Park is uh, a cooperation project between Germany and China on the very high uh, government level. And here, uh, the first building in this Qingdao Eco Park was a German enterprise center, uh, which uh, was operated by the uh, German center. So this is uh, basically a hub for German companies uh, to uh, have an office uh, in China when they set up business there. So, and we had the task here to use the DGNB system. This was then the right, uh, the first real scale project. And we saw that uh, the DGNB system can also be applied in the context of China in, uh, in a real scale project. Next slide, please. Now I come to, to Thailand. Uh, I think my colleague Robert Himmler is in the audience here. Uh, this is uh, uh, a, Putska, uh, 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 a Putska house project. They are also a developer for residential neighborhoods, uh, wanted to build a high quality building with uh, a holistic approach. Um, they um, came to uh, Martin Schoch, who is an architect who is also active in Cambodia, and also uh, our colleague uh, Robert Himmler from EGS Plan. And uh, they developed this building as a um, first plus energy building or the, the direction of plus energy building, but also DGNB certific uh, certification project. This is a rather small project, but also here the objective was to test the approach and to find out how the uh, um, uh, qualities can be implemented. Next um, slide, please. On this example, I want to talk about some technical qualities which are implemented here and which are tested uh, in the frame of the DGNB application. For example, um, the air tightness concept was very important. Air tightness is important in these buildings so that uh, there is not so much air exchange between inside and outside. So when we condition um, the building that uh, uh, the air uh, and the energy demand is rather low. Uh, they have external shading systems here. 
um, uh, also locally adapted uh, technical uh, system. They have double glazed uh, windows with low E coating to reduce uh, the energy demand for cooling in this case as well. And they have, uh, they have insulation of mineral wool uh, for the uh, outdoor walls. Next slide, please. Um, there are also some, uh, of course, internal functional qualities here implemented. They took care of the technical systems that the noise uh, quality uh, and the uh, noise from inside and outside from the AC systems and from outside is not too loud. They uh, looked at indoor air quality uh, and reduced uh, VOC by selection of right materials the media infrastructure and also the waste separation was optimized. Also here again, the topic of uh, access uh, for all, uh, that the building is uh, designed so that it can be used by handicapped people, uh, it's barrier free in entrance and so on, which is also a topic of the DTNB system. Uh, the next slide, please. I want to also uh, talk about the applicability of uh, these certification schemes. We have, of course, a very much developed um, infrastructure for the application of certification uh, schemes in Germany. Uh, in our project in Vietnam at the moment, we are doing life cycle assessment studies for building materials. And we found that not all, and also in the other project I have introduced, that not all uh, materials are and are not all data is available for the um, uh, certification. So we need to build up infrastructure for that. But also here we can adapt the system as uh, um, Stefan Anders has uh, introduced, adapt the system to the local situation so that the certification scheme can be implemented and can be used also in the context of the country. In our Vietnam project, we are developing now at the moment uh, um, uh, material leaflets where we ca characterize, for example, building materials where we also um, uh, uh, declare the environmental impacts of building materials, uh, and this will then help us to uh, use, for example, the life cycle assessment studies on building level. But this is, of course, not possible in all countries, and so we have to adapt uh, the quality criteria uh, to the current market and also to the availability and the infrastructure which are available in the market. Yes, please, next slide. Altogether, to conclude, we ca uh, um, found that the assessment scheme for sustainable building can be used as a management tool to create a holistic, performance-oriented quality of building and design projects. It's not so much about the certification, but about the guidance in the design and uh, building process. And this is especially valuable in markets where the uh, governance is probably not so much developed. So this scheme can give you a frame in which you can develop and which you can also uh, define your um, quality targets. Uh, and so this uh, certification scheme and also the DGNB scheme is very helpful uh, to define the objectives of the project. And um, this will then facilitate the achievement of a comprehensive performance, which is then also not only one time certified, but which is valuable for the whole time of the building's lifetime. And I think in this way, also building certification can serve very well in the context of Cambodia. And with our Build for People project, we try to uh, support and to promote these objectives and these approaches uh, yeah, in the following project work. Thank you. I think this was my presentation. Okay. The next slide, please. Yes, uh, my contact here um, um, yeah, from the university and also from the companies. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for that presentation. So um, now may I please uh, by uh, Mr. Ralph Meshwet-Smith, uh, also from Build for People Projects, uh, to give his uh, presentation on the benefits of certification. Thank you.
Thank you very much and hello to everybody. Good afternoon to Cambodia and good morning to the European participants. My name is Rolf Messerschmidt and I'm, uh, I have the background uh, being an urban designer and architect um, working uh, in our practice uh, here uh, close to Stuttgart. Um, I have international experience in research and development projects. Um, I'm the leader of the work package on uh, sustainable neighborhoods uh, in the Build for People project. And I'm also a strong engagement and uh, commitment uh, to the DGMB system. I'm a member of the DGMB technical board, uh, board and I was involved in the DGMB system development on urban districts right from the beginning. And of course, uh, one of our uh, jobs is to carry out uh, certifications of uh, sustainable neighborhoods. Next slide, please. So my focus now is the perspective uh, of sustainable neighborhoods. So I believe, of course, uh, high quality buildings are important in general and of course also for sustainable neighborhoods. Um, but I also believe uh, that it's uh, often quite important to look beyond buildings, to look on the urban planning level. Uh, so I'm going to present the benefits of the certification of sustainable neighborhoods. And I will also show you the already mentioned uh, case study, what you see in the background, which is the Eco Park Qingdao in China, uh, for which uh, we and a uh, uh, company of Deutsche Welle in China have been responsible together. Next one, please. So what's the added value of uh, neighborhood certification? Uh, so to some extent, of course, uh, this is quite similar to building a certification. Uh, we want to have a holistic approach on all relevant sustainability criteria. It could be a quality assurance system in the long term. It's transparent uh, quality control through an independent process of certification. And of course, you can use the award uh, as a communication tool. And we are also addressing uh, the UN sustainability development goals, which is uh, particularly for municipalities a quite important issue, but we're doing that all from the perspective of neighborhoods and want to take it to this scale level while looking at buildings uh, at the same time. Next one, please. So this is the uh, current list of criteria for urban districts. Some of them are similar, life cycle assessment in the environmental uh, quality uh, is of course a similar approach, but looking on an entire neighborhood. We look at urban climate issues, water cycle systems, biodiversity, or in the economic quality, it's about life cycle costs and very important environmental risk, for example, including flooding risk. In the socio-cultural and functional quality, we look at the thermal comfort of open spaces, open spaces itself, but also on a social and functional mix within neighborhoods and the provision of social and commercial infrastructure. In the technical quality, uh, we consider energy infrastructure, resource management, smart infrastructure, and also the very important field of mobility. In the process quality, uh, then integrated design, consultation and participation is important. And what we also cover with the Build for People project are government issues and finally monitoring. Next slide, please. So if you look at the key, key topics, um, which are from our point of view uh, at the moment, very important, but which will become even more important. This is of course climate protection uh, now and in the future, climate adaptation, biodiversity, resilience, mixture and participation, health, circular economy issues. And you see in the center a chart uh, showing how this is addressed within the DGMP criteria. So of course, life cycle assessment is very much related to climate protection, but also reflected by many other criteria. Climate adaptation is of course very relevant in urban climate, but similar also in many uh, other criteria and indicators. So that's the way we want to approach that. Um, Doug spoke about that. We are also looking to maybe uh, make development across the world, but of course adaptation have to be made to match the different planning framework, socioeconomic uh, conditions, technical and particularly climate conditions. And we have to find a way between applying best uh, uh, or international best practice on the one hand, but also on the other hand, the national Cambodian legislations and standards and to bring this together to a consistent and high quality system. Next one, please. 
This is now uh, the example of the Sino German Eco Park uh, in Jingdao, which has been the first uh, urban district that has been certified by the DGNB uh, in China. And once again, the uh, responsibility was on my side and Sebastian Schulz's side for industry design uh, Shanghai. And next one, please. Along that, you see uh, on the right hand the kind of base mass we use for the DGNB master tool. Uh, to carry out open space, urban climate, uh, and other calculations for the uh, benchmarking and rating uh, then later on. Um, but what is now the specific scope of the district certification uh, different from building certification? So our focus is the assessment of public space and publicly accessible space, streets, pathways, squares, open spaces. We consider building as well, but only with basic qualities. This is, of course, a demand for heating, electricity, and water that go into the neighborhood uh, calculations. Um, but the focus uh, is on the entire neighborhood and on the public spaces. And we look on uh, all what happens inside the boundary. This is the red line uh, across the district. Um, but we also look beyond that. We look at the interaction between other social infrastructure, maybe uh, how to get to the next main station and uh, all of that in order to get a comprehensive view of the neighborhood and the interaction with um, uh, with the adjacent areas. Next one, please. Yeah, to have a brief look at the sustainability highlights of the case study, um, just some examples uh, in the Qingdao Eco Park, e-car sharing has been introduced. And next to roof mounted solar thermals, for example, or PV panels, the focus again of the district uh, certification uh, was on an energy supply with a combined heat and power plant which serves the entire district and also the neighboring district. And uh, in, the, uh, in the middle line, uh, you see then uh, the uh, passive house development and you see the German center that Dirk has already um, presented. And in the uh, line at the bottom, uh, then again, more the uh, neighborhood approach uh, to sports and recreation amenities mixed use for uh, the supply of daily needs, the ecological landscape as a part of a, an overall rainwater management system. Um, and I was also involved in the development of sustainability indicator system to improve uh, the project uh, during the use and the operation and not to stop uh, with building uh, the neighborhood. Next one, please. So we ended up uh, with uh, gold uh, certification, but we ended up with this, uh, this quality for an already built district. Um, some of the other uh, certification schemes such as LEED or REM on the neighborhood level uh, show also some realized examples, but uh, they show also a lot of or, uh, only planned examples. So I believe for Chinese projects uh, looking and considering all of the mentioned qualities and criteria um, that uh, the gold certification is a very good result. In the meantime, the Eco Park went on to uh, the next uh, neighborhood achieving then uh, platinum. And uh, so I believe this exercise and looking at the qualities and to see what can be improved for the future was a very useful exercise to undertake. Next one, please. So my conclusions uh, and also an outlook, um, I believe that uh, such a neighborhood certification system can be successfully applied to Southeast Asia, including uh, Cambodia. With the Build for People project, we go for a country adaptation of this DGNB system. Um, and what you see on the right hand side is, of course, uh, what uh, all of you know, uh, Phnom Penh City Center. Um, and uh, below you see uh, our case study area within the Build for People project. Uh, in the southeast, the Chabar Empov area. So we have this case study to test uh, this criteria and to look at the benchmarking and so to get to a proper adaptation uh, to Cambodia. We will also look together with the DGNB um, for criteria for the early project stages, what is important at the beginning when setting up uh, a project. And so I believe this is quite useful to look uh, and to get uh, for a high sustainability profile and a quality assurance system on the urban planning level. And I also want to stress again that a lot of measures that should be undertaken uh, to achieve sustainable development um, have to be taken a look at um, at the urban planning stage on this scale level. And this is often more economically feasible than just to look uh, on an individual building. And finally, of course, once the certification is achieved, uh, this should also be a very good communication tool. So I hope 
uh, that you got some insight in the way we like to address the certification of sustainable neighborhoods. Next and final slide, please. If there are any questions on that, please contact me. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much for your presentation. Okay, I think uh, we are just uh, about the, the right time uh, on the panel discussion. So I would like to invite uh, Dr. Susan Bodaj, who's going to lead the chairwoman of your chance Green business committee, and she's also the managing director of the corporation. Susan has been uh, working actively in Eurocham and has been in many of our panel discussions. So today, once again, uh, Susan will lead the panel discussion soon, and she will uh, also introduce uh, three of our new uh, panelists. Thank you, Susan. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks to all the speakers for this uh, interesting insights. How green building certification can be applied in, in Southeast Asia. Uh, before we start the discussion, the panel discussion, I would like to uh, give a short introduction to um, um, the um, additional panelists. Um, you have already um, uh, known uh, uh, three of them. Here is um, uh, Dr. Stefan, Dr. Dirk and Dr. Rolf uh, presenting us about the case studies and the uh, status of green building certification in the region. I would like also to introduce, um, next slide, Mr. Uh, Nob Sokai from um, um, uh, Deputy Director of Department of Green Economy from the National Council for Sustainable Development. He is also the project manager of the Green Building Guidelines and Certification System which is the uh, first initiative from the government to establish a national green building certification here in Cambodia. And he will probably share more about these initiatives. Next slide. Then we have also Mr. Chair Bunseang here. We are very happy. He's the chairman of the Cambodian Green Building Council, the first of his kind in Cambodia, also a, a, a non-for-profit um, organization established just recently. And um, they have also developed a national um, uh, certification system more aligned with LEED. And we are happy that this uh, council is now in place and we have you here for discussing about this uh, topic. Next slide. And finally, we have uh, Mr. Yuk Sotirit, General Manager of WordPridge Homes here with us in the panel. Um, WordPridge Group has, um, uh, is a very important player in the real estate sector and they have, among others, the first affordable housing project um, uh, implemented, which has some green building features, but is not certified. But for sure, they are very interesting in the topic and um, we are looking forward to also hear from you um, uh, the, house, the importance um, of green building uh, here in Cambodia. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, I would like now to um, um, invite all the speakers also to uh, open your video so okay, that we can see you. And um, we open the discussion or to the audi our audience, please uh, use the uh, a Q and A uh, a function of the Zoom call to put your questions. And uh, we will try to uh, answer all the questions. So if, I, when, if you have a question, you can address it directly to a speaker or also uh, to the panel in general. Thanks. Uh, I would like to start um, uh, because we have here uh, our Cambodian participants and I would like to start uh, with uh, Mr. Sokai uh, from the NCSD um, uh, who has taken this um, in first initiative uh, of uh, the green building guidelines and certification. Could you explain to us um, why green building certification um, is, uh, is important and maybe a, a bit about the status about the current initiative you have taken? Over to you, Sokai. Uh, thank you very much, Suzanne, for your question and uh, good afternoon, to, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, uh, I, I, I think it is uh, uh, my honor to join this uh, panel discussion and especially to this important event. And I, 
I, I, I would like to uh, give my view uh, to the question. I think uh, the green buildings uh, is important uh, for uh, Cambodia as our, uh, uh, our construction sector is, uh, is booming, I think, in, uh, in last decade, and uh, in which uh, it is important that uh, resource efficiency and environmental impact need to be considered into the uh, construction uh, sectors. I, 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 I would like to, to start uh, like uh, very, very briefly is about the uh, current initiative of the uh, National Council for Sustainable Development and Ministry of Environment in uh, development of the uh, guidelines and certification for green building. Uh, uh, of course, uh, our uh, system uh, is adapted from uh, DGND uh, with the, uh, some features from uh, the Korean uh, uh, GC uh, green building uh, system. And we have started uh, this project uh, about two, two years now. And uh, at the moment, we are having the draft uh, guidelines and certification uh, in which uh, uh, it, it was uh, gone through uh, this, the, the discussion in, 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 last, in last month. And uh, at the moment, uh, we are finalizing uh, the draft to submit to uh, the NCSD uh, executing committee for uh, approval or uh, endorsement before we uh, uh, reach to the, the government de decision for approval. And I, I want to give you uh, like a brief that uh, our guidelines consist of two uh, rating system. One is for the new building construction uh, and uh, under the one is uh, for a building in operation or building in use. Uh, our uh, new construction uh, bordering with the like uh, uh, environment, uh, economic, uh, social, and culture, uh, 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 sustainability, uh, sustainable size, uh, sustainable uh, communication, and sustainable uh, technology for assisting the uh, the, the building's uh, uh, green uh, features. And uh, we we will uh, in our uh, in our rating system uh, we have. Uh, like a three three above of certificate in the uh, in the new construction, including uh, platinum, gold, silver, uh, uh, and, uh, and 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 while the the, the, the building in uh, in in operation, uh, it has four certificate. It's like a platinum, gold, silver, and uh, and bronze. Uh, we hopefully that uh, in 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 next. Uh, in early next uh, years, we will have a pilot uh, uh, of the of the guideline certification, and uh, hopefully uh, the government uh, will endorse this uh, uh, for the uh, real implementation in Cambodia. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, great to hear this uh, government initiative. We have also an initiative from the private sector, the Cambodian Green uh, Building Council, and. And Mr. Bunseang is here with us, chairman of uh, CAM GBC. And I would like to understand more about uh, this initiative. Uh, why did you start it? And uh, what is the status? And um, uh, how, why it is important? Over yes. to you. Uh, hello, good, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Bunseang. I'm, I'm an architect and the chairman of the PB councils and also professors. Uh, lecturer at the university too. Um, my um, ideally, uh, what we have in the GBC after we have our uh, associate around the ten countries in Southeast Asia, we found that in Cambodia in Laos, we still not have it. Then we we we, we get our uh, team and also the local professional and associate from architect, engineering, MEP, and also uh, uh, from, from any indigenous uh, friends, we have to have, uh, we call it a local Cambodian Green Building Council. Mainly we, we, uh, uh, we study from also uh, from yours, the, uh, the GB, and most of us uh, come from the Leeds, as I'm a graduate in US, practice in US, and uh, mainly I use the building code in my design architect system. When as Cambodian doesn't have the building code, even the zoning code. Then we found that uh, uh, also the ministry just set up and uh, just started with Baisokai two years ago, while we are prepared three years already on this. 
then uh, by seeing the climate respond, by seeing the, the local climate here, as a practice architect, as, 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 as a friend in the region, we, we see something that uh, the, 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 the local building green council saw the uh, initiated. And this one must be very flexible, very respond to the, 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 the design that are existing in the country. And also, uh, I also initiate to the, the government and policy maker. We found also the, the incentive tax or any on the environmental material. That's another uh, uh, issue that we are still pursuing going on. And uh, I also working uh, with the uh, so kind of support in the draft in the stage in, 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 uh, in with Sokai team as I'm working in Ministry of Environment as an advisor to minister too. So we, we hope that uh, we can find any approach that we are support. We are, our team are more professional practice, are more come from the private sector, are more from the people who will work at the ground and also academic backgrounds. So we do compare with the regions. We are friendly with the region of, uh, in the Southeast Asia. So that's what we, we want to have our Cambodian Green Building Councils. Of course, our guideline already written and our criteria uh, already written. And also our project also now are implemented. So we already uh, just a bit step, but however, we uh, will, 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 will work in support for the nationals uh, building, green building uh, uh, guideline, uh, uh, so high. And we hope that we can work together Together. We had to find any system and, and how we, we, we help to get there for Cambodian green building. Any way, any come away from German, from US or, or Britain or any that uh, important thing is we have we have to save our the greens environment is what uh, we wish. Thank you. Yes, from me. Thank you. Thank you, Bun Sen. And um, uh, very interesting to hear and uh, happy to hear that they are both initiative and they are talking to each other and bringing together all these forces to establish a national system. Uh, I will, would like now to hear uh, the, um, the view of a private developer from the private developer side, Mr. Sotirit, explain us uh, more about um, your housing project and maybe why you also um, started to um, uh, implement some green features and maybe uh, why it would be important to look also in the future for certifying whole projects, building projects. Over to you. Okay, good afternoon everyone and thank you very much Susanne and uh, thank you to the Eurochem uh, for having me on this uh, important uh, webinar on this important topic. Um, as Dr. Zuzan has mentioned, I think we are well patrol. We are the developer of this uh, first affordable housing development project in uh, Cambodia. And of course, uh, our project we started, uh, we have uh, uh, integrated, you know, some uh, green feature into green building feature into our project master planning and design. Even though we didn't really look into like certification, I mean, Actually, the, the idea is, is that we want to, to, to add value you know, to the project to the, for our project client. So that's why our designer has uh, our project, you know, we place uh, great consideration on the uh, green building uh, feature, for example, in terms of uh, the the use of uh, environmental friendly material, which is the compressed earth block, you know, it's kind of a Lego uh, block. So that's uh, without, as compared to the normal uh, brick, it, this one doesn't involve, you know, burning wood or anything like that. And it also helps in terms of uh, noise, you know, uh, and sound insulation. Uh, uh, as well as heat insulation, of course, keeping the house cool inside and also, uh, uh, again, on the noise uh, proof, soundproof between the, the unit. And beside that, we inter in, in our land use, we provide green and landscape park, you know, green area and landscape park. 
of the project is over 12% if we look at the percentage of the total land size. Also in terms of design, the house orientation, you know, we, we uh, or have the house all how are oriented north south so that you know to make full use of the natural light and also the the, the housing unit itself the design is uh, you know a lot of uh, window space so that it's allow uh, natural ventilation as well as uh, the natural light uh, into the house and also uh, the the level of the the finished level you know on the project of the house also higher uh, the, we think in the longer term you know because our kind of our principal because it affordable housing so we understand that the buyer they they use all their life saving you know to to purchase this kind of house as their home so we want to make sure that in the next 20 30 years down the road they will not experience any flooding or anything like that. So the way we design our drainage, our level on the project is, is, uh, is uh, at a very high level to prevent all those uh, issues in the future. So this is some of the, the key green feature that we have integrated into our project, even though we didn't really think about the certification just whatever we can do to provide to our client let's just do it you know and, and that's a thing yes. thanks a lot um, um and, and um, often we hear of maybe from developers they maybe also some of the audience you think um uh, there were questions around what would it cost if there are additional cost involved yeah implement all these features in regard to this um i would like um uh, to ask uh, uh, Dr. Dirk, who has um, um, uh, assisted many developers um, in also in Asia uh, to build green, um, and what are additional qualities and what are the benefits that uh, kind of uh, pay back even if you have additional cost, investment cost? Could you please explain us a bit more? Yes, uh, of course. Of course, uh, we cannot deny that uh, a better quality building has also a higher cost uh, uh, in uh, in some parts. But uh, we also, of course, get a higher quality, and this is uh, one part which gets more and more important uh, uh, in Germany and in Europe and in many other places. Is that we um, have better energy efficiency. So compared to a building with a similar function. Uh, a sustainable building has lower um, energy cost and that in the long term, in the life cycle of the building, we will have, um, let's say, less cost uh, over this term. And this is very important. This is not so important for developers who just build and sell, but uh, also certified buildings can, are able to inform the buyers about these qualities so that uh, buyers of apartments of buildings can decide we want to have a building which has low life cycle cost and then of course an important point is uh, for the function of the building that we have better comfort inside this is thermal comfort without conditioning is supported we have um also acoustic qualities not so much noise inside which is not which is neglected in many places uh, at the current stage. But from my experience in China, uh, many buyers uh, put more emphasis on these kind of qualities. And then there are, of course, many uh, aspects which are triggered in the design process by the certification scheme um, that people would not think about. And this is also something like durability, that the building will last longer, that it will uh, perform longer, the, uh, the the function so the money uh, for better quality is well spent and it really creates value in the long term and i think at the moment we are at the change of time somehow uh, that we construct fast and then uh, don't care about the future this is over this time uh, everywhere around the world everyone is considering the future climate change and so on and in this re regard i think the certification 
and not so much the certification, but the development of qualities and then to invest a little bit more is very important. Um, I don't want to say anything about uh, how much percentage is this more, more important, but it's really comparing apple with, with pears or apple with bananas, because uh, you, on the one hand, you have a building which is well designed. On the other hand, you might have a building which is not uh, lasting so long. Thanks a lot. Um, um, I was wondering also, um, DG, you, we have heard about DGNB, the, the German Green Building or Sustainable Building Certification. And I would like to address a question to Dr. Stefan from the, the um, uh, DGNB. Uh, uh, U-Trends, you um, adapted this to the um, uh, Chinese market and, and are also in the process to maybe adapt uh, some criteria to the Cambodian market. What are the major challenges when uh, um, adapting it to a, to a local market? Um, yeah, major challenging is always um, to look at the, the local norms and conditions because uh, we have there we have a German version, but we have also an international version of our rating scheme where we included ISO norms and others. But if uh, also in a, in a region like Cambodia or in China. They have other norms and regulations in the country. They're always the question is, is it comparable to this ISO norm or the German norm? So at the end, we have to have then a small working group uh, with experts where we can discuss these topics and um, discuss which one, uh, which norm we could use or which one not. Um, this is always a challenge. Uh, also databases, for example, we do for our um, projects, the whole life cycle assessment to calculate in CO2 emissions, the buildings for the construction, but also for operations. And for this uh, calculation, you need data. And in Germany and Europe, we have the different databases. Also in China, there's a, um, a local database. But if you do not have any database, then the question is how to do that. And in this case, we uh, try to work in a always in a pragmatic way to say, OK, if you have um, of your material, which impact has which material and which measure, and then we can go further and further. Also here in Germany, as we, when we started, we do not have any database. And then uh, we, we started with the first projects, and then we have also discussion with the government to develop uh, such a database because it's very important for the market, and, um, and uh, now we have one. So yeah, uh, try, try to work with that uh, and then and, and start and uh, the rest uh, will come later. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that, that leads us also to uh, the uh, Cambodian Green Building Council that is already established. I was wondering um, what kind of capacity is really needed for establishing now uh, and implementing such a national um, certification systems and, and what are your, your plans, Mr. Bunseang? Could you elaborate a few words about this? Yes, uh, I understand what you were saying very well. You know, just examples. Uh, I'm architects and uh, I face this kind of like criticism also. Uh, uh, not uh, not critique my project, actually. I, I always uh, critic how the new trends of uh, design. You see the old house made from wooden. It was so beautiful and very cool and can stay. When as a new modern material come apply to them, look like a wooden, but they have to put air, air conditioner. Without that, cannot stay. I think Mr. Juk Sotirat may understand well what about the current of uh, when the, the old time can stay and so beautiful and uh, respond to climate and happy, even the wooden house. But the current one, is, it looks the same, but we see how the, how the climate responds how the trend of the invasion of new technology and when as a designer doesn't understand what his own climate has. This is what are we, our concern in our the green building councils. We think about how we adapt to, to the existing climate, how we use the conventional material and the existing culturally practice, and also how we use the, our own local material and put in the same in this climate. Example. Uh, I used to live in the US, New York. 
when you do the house, you have one break CMU, you have to have insulated property with the waterproofing, and then you, you finish by the exterior curtain. Something like a bricks or other bricks, red bricks, any color mix. You need three or four layers to protect from your climate, like minus five or minus zero or minus 10 degree, and you need 25 degree at home inside. That the transition of the, 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 the climate, you have to design the world by that time. When as Cambodian, the climate only different, different degrees different. From 35 to 29, 28, you can survive. This kind of flexibility, uh, also the, the existing practice already there. So the KGBC, uh, as my sub-architect, I always invent and research on this. Even the material that uh, 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 used in the, the world bridge that uh, we call compressing networks, that the technology was a begin in the Europe, in the German itself during the war time. And Indian development and transformed Cambodia and used because so-called the low-cost houses. I understand very well on that uh, kind of like material applied. So sound transmission bound, bond, you can see the sound like he, he say, I know, I visit that house. But some method that we just read it just a little bit in the architecture design. It is use a, a natural ventilation, go back to the old time, go back to the, the climate response, and even the roofing also, I think can have the solution. So, so for me, uh, any material, the standard from, 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 from outside, that's great. You have already database, you have manufactured, you have tested. But to implement in Cambodia, be difficult. We don't know how the bricks that we use now, how the transmission of the you know, sound, even the, the, the heat, something like that. So the challenge is, become, when you study in the green buildings, how you have those database for your calculation. So better go back to the design strategy architect by using the uh, responsive, by using the local climate, by using how the uh, building cycle do it. So uh, I, 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 I personally think that way for this time. So thank you, Susan. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we have talked a lot about these individual buildings and um, um, what kind of green building features mm. uh, might be relevant. And I was wondering, we have heard a bit from, from Mr. Rolf about the neighborhoods. Uh, Mr. Rolf, can you uh, a bit yeah. clarify what is the difference between a green building certification for individual building and then for when you apply uh, criteria for a, a whole neighborhood? Are there might be also key criteria that might be very difficult uh, uh, to apply in, uh, in a context like Asia or are they universal? Uh, yes, thank you. I'm uh, happy to answer this question. Um, first of all, again, we uh, uh, looking to some extent on the building performance, what uh, the discussion was until now about. This is, of course, also relevant uh, for sustainable neighborhoods and uh, their certification. Um, but uh, we want to focus on the space between the buildings, on open spaces, on technical infrastructure, connecting uh, the buildings on mobility uh, issues. Um, and I believe that for the, the, the overall quality of life and the sustainability uh, performance, uh, this is quite crucial. So looking at Asia and uh, also particularly the situation in Phnom Penh, uh, the open space quantity and quality is of course an important element. Um, also, the way it is designed, if there is uh, shading provided uh, by trees or other elements, um, is uh, water management uh, included for flood prevention with uh, heavy rains and also in some parts of Phnom Penh, uh, there, uh, I believe, is a strong need to look on these issues. And this is uh, uh, what we want to consider and what we think uh, is important. And I also think it's uh, quite good to uh, when starting with a bigger development, to look at these issues uh, right from the beginning. Um, the uh, open space grid is something uh, which is developed uh, very, very early. Important transport links um, are an issue. Um, and uh, so I believe everything related with climate adaptation um, and climate protection on the neighborhood level uh, could uh, be really a contribution and uh, also once again to look at the quality of bigger schemes. 
beyond the building and to look on the interaction between buildings and the open space. For example, how is the program of buildings? Uh, how can we get to mixed use approaches that both the building and the open space, the public op uh, open space um, benefits uh, from them. So um, once again, it's a slightly more complex or it looks maybe more complex, um, but uh, I think this is a contribution to the providing very good conditions for sustainability. Thanks you. I saw um, Mr. Sotidit was nodding and I was also would like to, to, to ask you why, uh, why you lo should local developers look into green building certification um, or for the building itself or, or also for neighborhood? What, uh, what do you think? Why it's now the right time well, to start? Well, I think for local that? developer, I mean, especially for affordable housing sector, uh, I want to highlight on this uh, specific sector as compared to general kind of uh, residential uh, project, you know. Why? Because affordable housing project, I mean, the first one is the cost already, right? So we are looking to provide uh, a house that more or less, you know, can uh, assess the same value, I mean, in terms of the the uh, amenity facility as a, a, a township, as a neighborhood, you know, uh, for the people at an affordable rate. So that's the key kind of, uh, kind of the general uh, understanding and the general kind of objective of the project. But at the same time for us, what we are trying to do more is to, what else can we provide beside the cost? So that's come to the next level of uh, of of thing on the you know green feature uh, that can uh, provide more on the life cycle life cycle cost you know of of the project that when the house owner move in we know that they don't have much income so we want to make sure that their household expenditure their utility bill can be lower down you know can be lower down so that's something that we have uh, in mind and of course if the developer can get the certification i think that i mean the recognition a sense of recognition and helpful pro branding you know that sort of thing of course that's the the good to have but at the same time it's more on the what can directly benefit to the the owner of the house to the, to the target beneficiary of the project i think that's the for us that more important but of course certification is is uh, something good to have and for us especially for our second and future project we would want to 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 really take it into consideration on top of what we have been doing so far thank you Thank you. You have been highlighting the cost issues. It might make it challenging, but also you have the benefits for the users because uh, low energy cost, in particularly improved thermal comfort. And but the cost related to cost, uh, it touches also maybe a topic that we haven't talked about, and we have only a few minutes left. And I would like to touch this topic uh, because it has come up on the agenda. Um, um, uh, green buildings is related with. Um, climate protection with climate change mitigation and we have now new financing schemes called green financing and i've heard also i mean cambodia already talking about green bonds and new green financing institutions which can give preferential loans maybe at lower interest rates etc i would like to uh, to ask one of our experts from germany um, uh, dr stefan about which role um, green building certification plays in this area of green financing. What uh, what uh, what is the uh, what are the requirements and what is the relationship? Please over mm -hmm. to you. Yeah, thank you. So in the end, uh, such a certificate could be um, evidence for a bank for an investor that he that the project where they get the money for is really sustainable and uh, bring this in a in a good direction. And uh, as we st when we started in Germany with our rating scheme, we do not have also um, 
um, such funding. But um, the last year, so it's take a long time, um, there's also an federal funding here in Germany. If you certify your project with DGMB, then you can get additional money and not less. But there's also other discussions in the European context um, for green financing. And at the end, also the um, certificate is a proof of, of quality. So the bank is asking for that uh, because every project developer could say he do there and uh, green building. But if there's nobody who can prove that, um, and then they will um, do not get any money. So it could be interesting. I heard also from other regions in the world, for example, in India, that they have their a system that if the project is a green certified, then for example, they can build one floor more uh, of the building or they have a faster approval or something like that. Now, it must not be uh, always um, uh, financial support, could be also something like that, who is interesting for the project developer at the end. Um, but yeah, it's proof of quality and evidence, the certificate, it could be. Thanks a lot. Uh, interesting to hear. So uh, green building certification can also give some access to green financing or incentives. Um, so my last question would go to uh, our government representative, uh, Mr. Sokai, if you could answer or give some ideas what the, the government is thinking about uh, also in giving incentives maybe for green uh, uh, buildings in Cambodia. Thank you, Suzanne, for the question. I think uh, it is uh, in our head that uh, we need to con consider that the uh, green building uh, uh, developers or occupants should uh, be given the, uh, the, the incentive while they are uh, uh, moving to uh, sustainability. Uh, I think uh, uh, from the previous uh, speaker has mentioned that uh, uh, Green building uh, it, uh, put additional cost, uh, so uh, I think it it it, it sometimes it uh, reluctant uh, that uh, the uh, developers or uh, occupants uh, to choose the green building. So uh, uh, I I uh, I think uh, as you as a, a previous speaker mentioned that the green financing can be an option. Uh, I think it is uh, one incentive. And another incentive that uh, we uh, we are considering that uh, we uh, will discuss with the Ministry of Economic and Finance to find uh, where uh, what incentive can be provided. So in 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 in, in this uh, it can be like the the uh, the the, the tax reduction uh, based on the flow ratio can be an option. Uh, so this, this is uh, that we, we, we need to consider that. but somehow you know uh, uh, before uh, taking uh, consideration I think uh, the Ministry of Economic and Finance they, they, they really need like the concrete uh, proof or or, uh, or like a research paper before they, they can uh, decide so I, 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 I would uh, like to, to say that uh, uh, green bidding to come up with the incentive that uh, that can uh, uh, like uh, private sectors or uh, construction uh, industry uh, can move uh, with uh, the government uh, in in terms of I think in uh, in 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 our uh, environmental uh, policy we said that uh, Cambodia is moving like to the low carbon uh, society so meaning that. Uh, I think from this uh, 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 agenda that uh, that uh, uh, the, the 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 subsequent uh, step or action uh, should be uh, complement to to this. Uh, so so that this, this is uh, this uh, my uh, my answer. Thank you. Thanks a lot, and it was a good uh, um, also closing words. Um, thanks everyone. We have learned uh, that we are um, um, at a stage where Cambodia is developing um, a green building certification uh, system, and uh, the government is also planning to give incentives. Uh, we have um, heard from our speakers uh, from Germany uh, 
uh, green buildings are already a reality and implementing in the surrounding uh, Asian countries. And um, uh, we are at the starting point here in Cambodia, where first developers also start to apply green building features. And um, we, we hope um, uh, we will see more of those uh, good green projects. First uh, pilots I've heard also from um, um, Mr. Sokai and Mr. Bun Seang. And um, we are looking forward um, to, uh, to having maybe a, another session uh, in some time back. Thanks everyone again for contributing. Thanks to the audience to be here. And uh, I hand over to um, uh, Michelle to close this uh, session. Thank you, uh, Susan. Um, I, I think I, I, I will do the closing uh, on behalf of Michelle. Okay. Thank you. So thank you, Susan. Thank you, the entire panelists uh, for, for today's uh, webinar discussion. I, I think um, even myself, I, I've learned a lot from, from the session and I think it's really informative. Um, so once again, thank you to Build for People Project for co-partnering with your channel on this webinar. Um, I would like to also mention uh, again that next week we will have our third and final uh, versus and September series focusing on the impacts of uh, hazardous construction materials. So there will be also uh, a range of uh, speakers, expert, uh, and also giving a presentation uh, next week as well. So um, specifically for Eurocham members, uh, to be informed that the Eurocham will host our general, annual general meetings next month on the 14th of October from 3 p.m. Uh, so those who haven't registered, please uh, uh, contact me uh, directly and also to inform that this year we are re-electing two new board members. So for ordinary members of Eurocham who is interested, you can do so by uh, submitting the candidate form uh, uh, to me and then uh, before uh, the 11th of, of October. And also um, I would like to mention that tomorrow we, we have a uh, uh, ESO uh, meeting for, for, for this, uh, uh, focusing on uh, mentors' uh, stories. So to those who are in, interested, you can also uh, register with your chance. We have uh, our uh, coaching training as well, upcoming, and then still has a CV available. So that is all from my side. Um, thank you to our partners, and thank you everyone for, for today's session, and thank you to our speaker who joining from uh, Germany. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.